Hi guys, I hope you're good. I have come for a little walk by the sea, but this is not any ordinary walk. The path behind me that I'm about to take is called the Broom Way, and it is known as being the country's deadliest footpath. Now, I like a bit of adventure, but I kind of value my life as well. So for my walk onto the Broom Way, I have enlisted the help of a professional guide who will hopefully ensure I have an enjoyable day and get back safely. Hello, uh, I'm Tom. I run Walks on the Broomway itself. We've got a lovely day here today to go out. I take people safely across the Broomway, which is a historic public right-of-way footpath that uh, isn't marked and it goes out onto the tidal sand from mainland England across to Foulness Island. Access to Foulness is largely prohibited because the MOD own the land and the space surrounding it and all of the sands, the tidal area of the sands as well. So the only way you can really access Foulness without being a resident, a member of the MOD, you have to walk across the Broomway. It's the only, it's the only way to get access to the island. The Broomway has been around for sort of centuries. It was sort of first recorded about 600 years ago. We go out and we hit something called the, the Havengore Maypole. That marks the entryway for boats that go under the bridge that now connects mainland to Foulness Island. We'll then actually head out to a, a small trawler boat wreckage that, that wrecked because it wasn't following the direct line of the Maypole um, and ran aground in the 80s. Access to the Broomway is from Wakering Stairs in Shoebury Ness. Um, this structure is called the Six Bay Boom. After a safety briefing, we began our walk. This first area of soft sands is known as the Black Grounds. The sand then becomes firmer as we take our first steps out onto the Broomway. We're following the tide out to ensure we have enough time to safely complete our tour. You can see here what remains of the brooms that the Broomway is named for. Historically, people would line the route with brooms to indicate where it was safe to walk when going between the mainland and Foulness Island. Unfortunately, the brooms required lots of maintenance and replacement, and after the opening of the bridge to Foulness in 1922, the brooms were never replaced. Because the sands are so flat and vast, it can be very easy to lose your bearings, especially during poor weather and low visibility. Locals would use these chains to aid with navigation, placing one end on a broom and walking towards where they hoped the next broom would be. This is the Havengore Maypole, which sits in a line with other beacons signalling the entrance to Havengore Creek. The Broomway is six miles long in total. There is some debate over whether the route is naturally occurring from firmer sands than its surroundings, or whether the route was a man-made road that subsequently became flooded due to coastal erosion. This is the bridge onto Foulness Island. The Ministry of Defence heavily restrict access to the island via the bridge. However, the Broomway is a public byway, so you can legally access the island on foot from here. However, during the week, the Broomway is used by the Ministry of Defence for testing artillery. So walks like this only take place at the weekend. You can look back from here to where we started and to Foulness Island, but I was already losing track of where we'd walked from and I was very glad to have Tom as a guide. From the Maypole, we walked towards the wreck of the Pisces, which sunk here in the 80s when it didn't follow the correct route, as marked by the beacons. All crew on board had to be airlifted to safety. Many people have died trying to cross the Broomway. Locals would often spend too long on the mainland and race the tide back across to Foulness. Over a hundred people are thought to have died attempting to cross the Broomway, the most recent being a farmer who died in 1917.
Tom does many different guided walks, as well as the occasional private tour of the Broomway. The walk I was on was a photography walk, a shorter route than his standard one, but allowing the extra time to stop and take photos of points of interest. Just heading back in to land now. Nobody knew where we had parked and where we're heading back to, so just as well we have our guide with us. So it's about a kilometre, kilometre and a half back. Yeah, about that. Yeah. yeah. You can see just how fast the tide is coming in. Also, because of convergence of the flows from the river's crouch and roach, whirlpools are formed and the water seems to come at you from all different directions. We'd almost made it back to the safety of dry land. My one criticism and I'm sure for most people this would be a huge positive, was that for the deadliest path in the country, there was no real sense of danger. That was entirely thanks to Tom and his calm and knowledgeable skills as a guide. But maybe the calmness and bleak beauty of the Broomway is also what entices so many people to take the risk of racing the tide and losing. What do you think? Oh, that was so much fun and the weather was amazing. Oh, I would definitely recommend this to anyone who's thinking of doing it. Tom was a fantastic guide. He knew all of his stuff, all of his history, didn't rush us. We had loads of time to see everything, take our photos and yeah, just oh, so, so good. Definitely recommend it. I'll be back again, but for now, I'm gonna go and search for some breakfast. All right, thank you for watching and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye.